Frank News this midday, a major shakeup in the trial for a man accused of kidnapping and killing 10-year-old Davenport girl Braisha Terrell in 2020. Henry Dinkins has waived his right to a jury trial. It comes the very day jury selection was set to begin. It is 6.48. It is still raining. Some might say it's pouring. And I suppose there's probably an old man snoring out there, Brandon Libby. What do we need to know about today's rainfall? Police released the identity of a man killed in Waterloo earlier this week. They say 19-year-old Joseph Quayle was shot to death just before 5 yesterday morning on Amy Street. There's no word yet on any suspects. Asteroids to meteorologists. Let's check back in. We'll sort back to the meteorologist, Brandon Libby. Brandon, you know, I briefly majored in aerospace engineering when I was in college. In fact, I did not know that. A lot of my professors said I just took up space. <laughs> Actually, this Saturday, we're hosting the Iowa Muscle Fest, um, which is a bodybuilding competition, which is even crazier to see at a theater. Um, so I, I, was, I was curious. I wasn't yeah. sure if it was muscles like muscle men or muscles yeah. like the shellfish. But no. right, the mu the mu I remember hearing about this when I was a kid. 1934, the Bears and the New York football giants were playing a football game. There was freezing rain. It was ice on the field. Of course, it was the 30s. They really didn't do anything about it. So at halftime, the New York football giants, they go and they buy new shoes so they can actually grip the field. And that's what won them the game, Brandon Libby. And I think that shows the importance of planning ahead and being prepared for the winter weather. Right now on Today in Iowa, we head back to the courtroom after Jeremy Goodale learned his fate two years after killing a high school Spanish teacher. Plus, we have the details as a shutdown preventing spending bill heads to the president's desk. And we explain why you and I students protested the Board of Regents meeting in Cedar Falls yesterday. Good morning, Iowa. I'm Ryan with It is 629 exactly. This is Track 7 Yellow Alert Day as well. Let's get a check in on those morning commutes in Waterloo. This is Highway 218. Doesn't look too bad out there right now. Traffic is still moving smoothly. But the big concern for today, the reason why we have that Storm Track 7 Yellow Alert Day, there's something you really can't see on camera. It's the wind out there today. Let's check in with Storm Track 7 meteorologist Robbie Kamadari. Robbie, what exactly are we expecting today? We're not only expecting these huge gusts, but also some pretty powerful sustained winds. Yeah, sustained winds, 20 to 30 miles an hour. All righty. Thank you, Robbie. A traffic pattern that was once rare here in Iowa is now becoming increasingly popular statewide. Kate, WWL's Lily Cedar Doll is live with us and has more about these roundabouts. Lily, how exactly have they become such a straightforward solution for the Hawkeye Street? Well, Ryan, Ryan. All right, thank you, Lily. The second team who pleaded guilty to Noema Graber's murder in 2021 was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. It finally closes a painful saga in Fairfield. During the emotional sentencing yesterday, the judge repeated several times that he believes Jeremy Goodell is remorseful, regretful, and capable of rehabilitation. And you have expressed genuine remorse when you say that. The court heard several victim impact statements, including from Noema's son, Christian. He says he forgives Goodell despite what happened. A lot of people don't believe in you. Jeremy Goodell himself also addressed the court. He said he hopes that one day the entire Graber family, his own family, and everyone else will be able to forgive him. Earlier this year, the other teen in this case, Willard Miller, was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 35 years. A follow-up now to breaking news we first brought you last night. Several pets, dogs and cats, died in a house fire along Lafayette Road in Raymond. We're told the fire started around 7.30 last night. That word coming from the Evansdale Fire Chief. Firefighters could not confirm how the fire started or just how extensive the damage is. The Cedar Rapids Fire Department and Parks and Rec Department will conduct controlled burns at city parks. The burns will begin at 9.30 this morning at Huntington Park, followed by Cherry Hill Park and Ellis Park. The burns may cause some smoke, but they will continually be monitored. The city's Parks and Rec Department says these prairie burns are necessary for prairie management and prairie health, and they are one of the best ways to control invasive plants, saplings, and wood vegetation. You and I students rallied outside of the Board of Regents meeting in Cedar Falls yesterday. It comes as the Regents discuss the future of diversity, equity, and inclusion programs at the University of Iowa, the University of Northern Iowa, and Iowa State University. The University of Iowa has 61 DEI staff members. Iowa State has 56. You and I has 25. 
You and I students spoke about the importance of these programs, as well as the services, training, and education they provide on campus. The study group also recommended not requiring people to submit pronouns or having faculty submit a DEI statement. The recommendations also include a provision telling those three public universities not to use race as a factor in admissions or hiring. Without these programs, students at UNI will lose some of its appeal. We all hold this idea that we value our education, we value our um, state's economy. Those three universities, the University of Iowa, UNI, Iowa State, have all expressed concerns that they could lose some federal funding if they don't comply with DEI requirements. The board has until December 1st to consider those recommendations and send a final report to Governor Kim Reynolds. It looks like the federal government will stay open for now. A temporary spending plan is heading to the president's desk. As Amy Kiley reports, though, the bumpy road to government funding does not end with the president's signature. This Friday night... The reporting. GOP presidential candidate Nikki Haley will be in eastern Iowa today. She'll host two town halls. The first will be at the Coffee Bean at Emmaus Bible College in Dubuque. That event begins at 12.30 with doors opening at 11.30. She'll also speak with voters at the Waverly Area Veterans Post this afternoon. That event begins at 4.30 with doors opening an hour earlier at 3.30. New Hampshire set its primary date eight days after the Iowa caucuses. The state's primary will be held January 23rd. It defies President Biden and the Democratic National Committee's plans to give South Carolina the party's first primary contest. Iowa Democrats were stripped of their first of the nation status in the DNC's calendar. The caucus will still be held on January 15th. Results won't be released for a couple of weeks until Super Tuesday on March 5th. The conflict between Israel and Hamas is turning into a war of competing narratives after Israeli troops stormed the Al-Shifa hospital. An Israeli spokesperson says they found proof that Hamas has been operating in hospitals. The Israeli military released images it says shows Hamas terrorist weapons like AK-47s inside the hospital. The Gaza Health Ministry released a video showing smoke filtering into the hospital's intensive care unit and doctors pushing patients to safety. NBC News is unable to independently confirm either video. These weapons, this place, clinic. So far, it's not clear whether there are tunnels or a command center at the hospital. Hamas has rejected those allegations. One doctor said it was a frightening experience. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says there is no place in Gaza they will not reach to target Hamas. Coming up on Today in Iowa, the hits just keep coming for the Hawkeyes. With the details as they prepare for Illinois without one of their key stars. And we explain why this old book found in a retirement home here in Iowa is unlike any book most people have ever seen. We'll take a live look this morning along I-80 in Corville. Interesting scenes out there with the early sunrise. It's 642. We are back in just a moment. KWWL's Today in Iowa anchor Ryan Witchery spoke to experts and a local family on the front lines of the battle to learn more. Hey, I'll try again. Maybe you should use some bad words. <laughs> I do say, I say a lot of bad words. For 42 years, Rod and Lori Payne have stood by each other in good times and in bad, and especially recently in sickness and in health. He's my everything. You want to get mad? At home, the Paynes spend their time enjoying each other's company and a little bit of healthy competition. <laughs> See, that's your fault, Rod. Huh? That's your fault. It's always mine. You bought a six-foot Pac-Man. <laughs> so she'll sit there and play Pac-Man. Oh, so do you. <laughs> yeah. And we'll be playing quite a bit, and then all of a sudden the camera would have to shut off because she gets frustrated at those little guys eating her Pac-Man. The Paynes have also taken solace in their shared love of music. They've even garnered the attention of musician and Iowa native Jay Allen. He, he helped me. Well, he, Jay's mom passed with Alzheimer's, and he wrote a song called Blank Stairs. 
so about two or three times a week, nights a week, we'll just sit there, we'll shut the TV off, we'll play our playlist of music, and the last song before we go to bed always is Blank Stairs. Now granted, it makes her cry, but it also makes her, I don't know, it's like a, a security blanket or a safety pillow. She hears that song and she just relaxes. For the pains, making the most of the good days is balanced by some not so good days. Things are progressing. We're gonna get through it. Yep, we will. Recently, there's been a spark of optimism with new drugs designed to finally attack the root causes of dementia rather than manage the symptoms. It's not the cure, but it means that we can postpone the cognitive decline, which could mean like one, two years uh, more for families, patients and families. Still, experts like Dr. Juliana Souza Tallarico say there could be some bumps in the road for people just like the pains right here in Iowa. We have around 26 um, geriatricians we, in 2021 in Iowa. To meet the demand by 2050, we need to increase that by 400%. Back in Cedar Falls, the pain say they're optimistic. We're really excited about it. We're nervous about what could be, you know, the side effects. But uh, at this point, Lori's always told me, she goes, well, I don't care. What have I got to lose? So she says, if, I can, if she could take the drug and it helps somebody else, that's all she wants to do, plus help herself. But... They're hopeful for brighter days and preparing for bigger battles. She's not very talkative this morning, but sometimes she can get going and talk about how she's going to kick this thing's butt. And... I do. I mean, I'm going to beat it. I am. And that's the main thing. She's, she's got not a lot fair. of support. Huh? She's not fair. No, but I think God picked the right person because he knew you, can, you could be a good voice. I hope to.